Good morning, folks. We've got weather, space weather, top science news, starting with our star where small plasma filaments continue dancing. When we come to spaceweathernews.com, we find the last day with the coronal holes leaving their dominance of the disk in favor of the small, bright, active regions. Still painting the north and south poles black as there are always coronal holes at the poles, the small, bright, active regions have been unable to produce any solar flares, not really having much in the way of sunspots beneath them either. FYI, the reason the northern coronal hole seems more enormous the last few weeks is because Earth is well north of the solar equator right now, having a better look at the North Pole. About 5 degrees or so right now, meanwhile in March will be 5 to 7 degrees below the sun's equator, when the southern coronal hole should appear larger. Quick little look at the solar wind, where telemetry is slightly variable, but is wholly within calm to moderate intensity range. Geomagnetic conditions, handling it nicely, and geospace is quiet. Let's go to the weather. We're starting in Europe, where the UK and other northern isles are taking rain right now, with more expected off the Atlantic low convergence tonight and into tomorrow morning. Flash flood potential is high in prone areas. Up next, we're at Reventador, where small eruptions take place following both Popo and Poas to the north the last week. You heard here three weeks ago that the coldest parts of this winter will be more brutal than usual in the eastern states, and we are hearing similar stories from nearly every forecaster at the moment. Two days ago, we covered the Turkey Dam and cave flooding plan, and now we step southward to Africa. A similar story is unfolding there, except it's not governments versus their dissidents, it's Egypt versus Ethiopia. Before getting into what will be some geek-heavy science news, let's ease into astrophysics with a gorgeous shot of NGC 4194. Hubble's view of this seemingly messy beast throwing a conniption is actually a couple galaxies coming together, they say. We will hit colliding galaxies again here in a moment, but first we're going to the sun and learning more about the plasma physics that makes solar flares and particle explosions called CMEs. It turns out that the two-stream instability is involved. Keen observers might recall we did a deeper look episode on the two-stream instability back on September 11th. We have heard about the electric currents and magnetic fields being involved, but this specific plasma instability is indeed the sort of thing you can just look at and see how the charged particles flowing at relativistic speeds getting caught up in something like this could make a solar flare. It's not unlike the collapsing double layer described by Alphane in the famous text Cosmic Plasma. Up next, dwarf galaxies, the smaller satellites circling larger galaxies like our Milky Way and like Andromeda. We might recall the preprint of the paper describing a dwarf galaxy reality without dark matter and today that paper is published in one of the top journals. Excellent to see this make its way into the lexicon. Make sure it makes its way into your memory. Up next, we're looking at a triple active galactic nucleus. You know, the super powerful, jet happy cores of galaxies. And they say there are three of them coming together here, and it's not hard to imagine their dance in your head. But if there is considerable mass difference between two of them, the third might not be its own galaxy at all. Yesterday, we reminded you about the horrendous models of such cosmic features and how they leave a blank spot where potential accretion, magnetic fields, and plasma pressure could force a third member to come together. Now in this model, they are the same sized objects dancing very neatly, but in reality it would not be so neat and tight and linear. And just getting one snapshot of an object in the heavens wouldn't leave you able to tell the difference. Folks, last but not least, astronomically forced climate means exactly what it sounds like. This is a fantastic confirmation of one of the longer cycles, 100,000 years, the great glacial cycle of our planet. The paper contains a lot of good information, including geomagnetic polarity charts over time, which are always fun to look at. But alas, good to be focusing on the 100,000 year ice age cycle because our planet spends about 80 to 90% of its time in those ice age glaciation conditions. Only short intervals in between get our interglacial warmth. And yesterday, we heard about how the last interglacial was eight degrees warmer than today when life was thriving. We'd actually have to go back about 400,000 years to find an interglacial as long as the one we're in now. We have overstayed our welcome. 20, 30 degree drops, those are coming. We greatly appreciate your support, whether it's plasma, catastrophe, or the cold. We've got a movie for that, linked below the video. And website members, remember we're on a one day delay this week, so your fly on the wall podcast going to happen today. 
We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.